This video is about the section of the specification P4G. It's called treatment. For this section, you need to know how both gamma rays and X-rays are produced and how they're used in medical treatment. Let's think about how an X-ray works. X-rays produce pictures of bones. This is because X-rays are absorbed by the bones. The areas that are black, X-rays have passed through and not been obstructed. And the areas that are white, they've been absorbed by the bones. And so that's why they show up. Some of the areas are grey. This is because the thickness and the density of the materials, the bone in this case, affects how much X-rays are absorbed. So where the bone is denser, it's lighter, and where the bone is less dense, it's more grey. X-rays are produced by firing electrons at metal surfaces. The X-rays are given off. This makes them a lot easier to control than gamma rays, because if we don't want X-rays, we just don't fire any electrons at the metal surfaces anymore. As I just mentioned, gamma rays are harder to control. This is because they're emitted at random from the nucleus of the atom. So we can't stop them or start them, they just occur. If we're using gamma radiation for a medical purpose, then we need to make sure we have some radioactive isotopes that we can use. It's possible to make them. Nuclei can become radioactive by absorbing extra neutrons. This is usually done in a nuclear reactor. Once the nucleus has become radioactive, it will then emit gamma rays and then we can use it as medicine. How do we use gamma rays in medicine? Well, we can use them to help treat cancer. Gamma rays are focused on tumour and because they damage living cells, they can damage the tumour. But what we don't want to do is damage any of our other healthier cells. How do they do this? Well, they make sure that gamma rays are focused on that tumour. They might use a wide beam, and then that beam might be rotated around the patient, ensuring that all the time it's aimed at the tumour, and the non-cancerous tissue, the healthy tissue, only gets a small proportion of the gamma radiation. I hope that you can pick this up from the diagram. Radioactivity is also used as a tracer to help look inside the body. They use gamma rays and sometimes beta particles because they can be detected outside. Alpha radiation is too strongly ionising and it's also not penetrating enough so you can't tell that it's there. They get into the body through a drink or food or sometimes injected into the blood and then they need to be given time to spread out and go to the area that is needed. Detectors outside the body would then follow the tracer and build up a picture so that the doctors can work out what's wrong. Radioactive tracers only have a short half-life. This is so that they reduce their radiation quite quickly and that means it doesn't damage the living cells. It's very important that you're aware that radioactive materials destroy living cells so they can't stay in the body for very long. In an exam question you might be asked to select the most appropriate radioactive material to use as a tracer in which case you need to look at their penetrating power, for example, gamma can be detected outside the body, but also their half-life, because you want something that's long enough that can be detected, but not so long that would damage the living cells. Thanks for listening.